cryptids, creatures, creepy crawlies. You'll find all of the above in forested areas the world over. It's possible that some are friendly and do not wish to cause you any harm. If you subscribe to the idea that they are all friendly though, you're in for a nasty surprise. Folks have been spotting unnameable beasts and bruins since the rumor mill was first opened to the public. Scary stories about happenings deep within the woods are the lifeblood of communities everywhere. You want to scare the crap out of some campers? Sasquatch. You want to keep folks away from the waters? Lake sharks. Looking to keep a bunch of hikers on their toes? Siren head. It's just something we do as a species. We tell stories and try to get our friends to change their pants every once in a while. But it's not like these stories are pure imagination. The creatures we describe have to have some sort of precedent, a reference to use the terminology of artists everywhere. And while some can be explained away through well documented species, a good deal of cryptids and creatures have yet to be pinned down. And these are the kind that you don't want to run into. They're just too unpredictable. Plus, no one will believe you if you run screaming from the woods with one arm bit off. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're taking a look at the top 5 creatures you wouldn't want to meet in the woods, part 2. Now before we can run down our list of dangerous deciduous denizens, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more creatures and creepers. You ready? Let's get going. Coming at number 5, we've got the skunk ape. We've got two more words for you. Florida. Bigfoot. If that doesn't send chills down your spine, then I don't know what will. There's enough crazy stuff going on over in Florida without involving cryptids. Now, I don't mean to slight my Florida friends and fiends, but have you seen all the Florida Man articles out there? How many kids got munched by alligators and crocodiles last year? Did you know that Florida has alligators and crocodiles? So if the skunk ape can live in that kind of environment and thrive, it's gotta be tough. Our bipedal humanoid goes by many names like Swamp Cabbage Man, Swamp Ape, Stink Ape, and Swamp Squatch. Seems that the folks naming this cryptid were going for very descriptive words. Obviously, it was given these many titles thanks to its unique appearance and stench. Rotting garbage, methane, skunks, you name it. That's one reason already that you wouldn't want to come within sniffing distance of this foul primate. All sightings have noted the stench, but they've always seen it from afar. I would imagine that being close enough to really smell these roses would result in unconsciousness. Maybe death. I don't know how smelly it is, but the human body is a fragile thing. The skunk ape has black fur and glowing red eyes, which is interesting because most primates lack the layer of tissue behind the retina to reflect light like that. This lumbering loner seems to be around six to seven feet tall and 450 pounds. My friend had an uncle that matched that description too. He also had hygiene issues. You don't think. No. Sightings of our swampy pal date back to the 60s and 70s, where all sorts of reports of a skunk ape shaped being hanging out in people's backyards. These reports slowed down for a while until an anonymous letter was sent to police in Sarasota. There were two photographs in the letter of what the sender thought was an escaped orangutan, but actually appeared to be closer to the description of a skunk ape. Cryptid enthusiasts, of course, were thrilled. Since then, numerous skunk ape videos have appeared, and there is even a skunk ape research headquarters in operation. Who wants to visit Florida? Filling out our number four spot, we've got the crazy critter of Bald Mountain. I know what you're thinking. Sounds like something right out of a black and white alien movie, and you know what? You're not wrong. But even if it seems to be some harebrained creature dreamed up by a sci-fi writer in the age of the space race and mayonnaise cake, this is something you wouldn't want to get up close and personal with. This crazy critter of Bald Mountain is an insect-like creature originally sighted on you guessed it, Bald Mountain in Washington. Two separate parties claim to have seen it, one a grocer out hunting and the others being a married couple driving through. It's described as being a horse sized being with tentacles, suckers, an antenna and giving off a strong green glow like a neon sign. It's covered in scales, has a football shaped head and seems to be of a rubbery consistency. First of all, it's the size of a horse. Horses are gigantic and powerful and they spook easily. Imagine spooking this thing and it kicks you with its sucker tentacles and rips your face off before you get a chance to run. Not a great way to go. We don't know what it eats either and if you're the only thing around, it may very well take a lovely alien acid fueled bite out of you. Plus, it glows. You know what else glows? Radiation. Very likely that your Geiger counter would be going crazy near this fellow, which is not a good sign for your health or well-being. Even if you got away, who knows what kind of space cancer you might contract. Maybe you'd grow scales to match the crazy critter. 
After the initial sightings, a sheriff in Lewis County began an investigation. Before he could get too far though, the inquiry was halted by individuals claiming to represent NASA and the US Air Force. These folks were heavily armed and clad in military uniforms with no insignia. Naturally, the sheriff gave up and let this crack team take over. Once the special team swooped in, info relating to this creature dried up entirely. If the Area 51 raid actually went through, I bet they would have found it by now. I can see it now. Mason Ramsey and the crazy creature yodeling together on a hit tune. The world is not ready. At number 3 we have Bunyip. We're heading out to the outback for this one. Generally you ought to be wary of any and all creatures in Australia. Pretty much anything there can and will kill you. Box jellyfish, saltwater crocodiles, blue ringed octopi, stonefish, spiders and snakes. Nothing here is cuddly. Nothing. Especially not the Bunyip. Originating in Australian Aboriginal mythology, this cryptid lurks in swamps, billabongs, creeks, riverbeds, and waterholes. And yes, swamps exist in forests, so this creature qualifies for this list. The name comes from an Aboriginal Australian word for devil or evil spirit. In classic cryptid form, the actual appearance of this one is up in the air. Some say it resembles a seal or a swimming dog around 4-6 to six feet in length with shaggy black or brown fur and a head like a bulldog. Others will say they are long necked creatures with teeny tiny little heads clocking in at 5 to 15 feet with a head like a horse, an elongated neck with lots of skin folds. From there they become more eclectic and less classifiable. Crocodile legs, bird heads, starfish bodies, big claws, you name it. But there are some mainstay features we can all agree on. Bunyip can swim swiftly, it has a loud roaring call, and it will kill you. Just like the honey badger of lore, Bunyip don't give a f**k. Wanna know how they kill you? It actually sounds kinda nice. Ready? Bunyip will hug you to death. Oh, sounds like the reason I was so scared of Barney the Purple Dinosaur. Once a Bunyip gets its claws on you, it'll squeeze until it can't no more, leaving you loved to death. It's been known to scoop up women and children in the night and gobble them up, so stay wary. But at least we know nobody's dying alone. Coming in at number two, we've got the Werecat. Werewolves are so mainstream, right? How many werewolf stories, movies, video games, songs, etc. do we have already? Let's focus on the less popular werecat today. There are less solid facts on werecats, likely due to the fact that they did not enter the popular folklore until later in the 19th century, long after werewolves began stalking the night and haunting dreams. It's also possible that cats are just craftier and sneakier than wolves in general, so therefore werecats have hidden their identities more effectively. Smart kitties. While not lichens themselves, werecats do belong to the lycanthropic category. They can shapeshift, have superhuman physical abilities, a healing factor, extra powerful senses, and the use of their gnarly claws and fangs. Mm -hmm. Definitely don't want to run into these guys in the woods. My personal favorite werecat makes an appearance in the 1986 weird and wild horror flick, The Spookies. The werecat runs around the woods with a hook for a hand, killing hikers, burying children alive, and pretending to be a benevolent savior. Unfortunately, there's nowhere near the amount of media dedicated to werecats as there is to werewolves, so I implore you, Go out there and start the werecat cannon. Equal creature representation. And lastly, at number one, we've got the Kandarian Demon. Oh man, truly saving the best for last here. This is an otherworldly spook that you definitely don't want to run into while taking a romantic weekend trip up to the old cabin. No thank you. Originating from the Evil Dead, the Kandarian Demon is an ancient demonic spirit and the primary source of deadites and other supernatural occurrences. Described by Ash as a living evil, this foul and shapeless thing hails from unknown origins and seeks to cause pain and terror wherever it lurks, from steering cars into oncoming trucks, to using its powers to control a demonic tree and commit certain unnameable acts, all the way to the destruction of a steel guttered bridge this demon is not to be trifled with, and it will ruin your day and then your life in the blink of an eye. On top of deadite creation, the demon can fly several feet in the air and is invulnerable when in its non-physical form. But let's get back to deadites and why they're so especially horrifying. Through many different means, they can possess any living thing and compel it to do evil things. Personally, I would hate to become a deadite while on vacation. Plus, the way they take you over is just the worst. Classic zombie rules, but honestly, it's so much easier for somebody to turn into a deadite. If you are killed by a deadite, you're becoming one. Even if you don't die, most violent attacks are enough to end your run as a human. A bite or a scratch is enough to turn most people too. Plus, the Necronomicon has a spell in it that causes instantaneous possession without the need for summoning the Kandarian Demon. The worst, though, is the touch of evil, not Orson Welles. I don't know if you guys will get that film noir, please. This is a big reason we don't want to see the Kandarian Demon while out on the trail with Sparky. More infamous than maybe any other type of possession, this one stems from a physical violation of a potential host's body by living objects. 
I'll say no more. But that would most definitely ruin whatever plans you had for the rest of the day. Deadites do prefer their hosts to be alive, but they actually have the ability to take over corpses as well. Even spooky, scary skeletons aren't exempt from the Deadites influence. I'll probably be rescheduling my nighttime drive out to the remote areas of the woods, just in case. And that's that. Five horrible beasts you would never want to bump into as you toured the pines. Which one was your favorite? Are there any more monsters deserving of a place on the list? Let me know down in the comments. Before I disappear, let's take a quick look at some of the more fascinating comments from last time. Dragonhammer4 says, no antlers. Really? SMH. Okay, I get, go watch part one. Antlers took the top spot. A note to the rest of the audience. Please, do your background work before complaining. And I don't have to, you know, tell everyone to go watch the old videos. I don't know. Seeing Green Devil says, come on, man. Freaking Ghostbusters, really? Hey, I'm just trying to show a little something for everyone, all right? Come on, tough guy. Lighten up a little. Andrew Jones says, Maple Leafs, I thought you had good taste. New Jersey Devils till I die. Andrew, it's all right. Our hockey loyalties need not come between us. How's Taylor Hall doing, by the way? Corey Shorter says, they're doing their best to put out horror movies, but are they the best quality horror movies? You know what, Corey? That is a question as old as Hollywood, my friend. We can only wait and see and be glad that all sorts of filmmakers are getting a shot at the genre. And with that, we have come to the end of our program. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Just another day. Are the lifeblood of communities the world over? Nope, I said the world over already. And then the layer of tissue behind the retina to reflect like like that. That didn't sound right. Low battery. But actually appeared to be closer to the strip. Did I say that right? Maybe not. Maybe I'll just do that. The inquiry was haunted by individuals haunted. Ghosts on the brain. Originated. This one makes me think of the song. Bearcat. Have you ever heard that song? Like, do the bear cat. <sighs> no? Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's nowhere near the amount of media dedicated to were cats. Wow. I am undergoing a transformation of my own. The Kandarian spirit is an ancient and is invulnerable when it is in its. Bunyip, don't give a f. They'll bleep that, right? <laughs>